Yeah, thank you, Trevor, for that kind introduction. Thank you for being here. Um, because I'm registered higher than the tuba. And today I want to talk about the developments of the so-called Bach trumpet. And thereby I want to focus on the connections between the researchers, the musicians, and the musical instrument makers of the time around 1900 in Berlin. In the late 19th century, Berlin was a center for a return to the musical instruments of the Renaissance and the Baroque era. The founding of the collection of musical instruments at the Königliche Hochschule für Musik is just a milestone of a development starting decades earlier. After the works of Johann Sebastian Bach had become popular again with a broad public through the performances of Mendelssohn Bartholdi, at the latest with the performance of the St. Matthew Passion in 1829, they endeavored to research the instruments of the 16th to the 18th centuries and their sound began at the end of the 19th century. At that time, efforts began also to research the brass instruments of the 16th to 18th centuries and their sound. Especially in the field of brass instruments, however, the problems were still quite different from those with other instruments. The old instruments, which had no valves, required a special way of playing in order to reach the chromatic ranges of the natural tone series, the so-called clarino playing. However, by the middle of the 19th century, at the latest, almost no trumpeter had mastered this technique. This resulted in trumpet parts being played, in some cases by clarinets and oboes. In the long run, however, this did not seem to be a solution either, which is why musicians and musical instrument makers looked for other solutions. So how did these developments play out in Berlin? Before we look there, a few words about Hermann Ludwig Eichborn. Hermann Ludwig Eichborn was born in 1847 in Wroclaw and died in 1918 in Greece near Bolzano in South Tyrol. Eichborn had a doctorate in law, but was also an excellent horn player and trumpeter. He experimented with wind instruments, composed, and was active as a conductor and music, uh, and yeah, as a composer. Um, he was the first modern researcher to deal with the history of brass instruments, especially the trumpet. Two publications are important in the context of that topic. The first is Die Trompete in Alter und Neuer Zeit, um, the Trumpet in Old and New Times, um, from 1881. And the second is Das alte Clarinblasen auf Trompeten, um, the old clarino playing on trumpets, which he published in 1894. According to Edward Tarr, the term clarino playing had three aspects for Hermann Ludwig Eichborn. At first, the normal playing as opposed to blasting, as the second, the playing in the fourth octave of the harmonic series, and as the third, how had it been possible to ascend in a register in which the trumpet is not used at all anymore. Eichborn attributes the loss of clarino playing to the technical development of the instruments. On the one hand, he sees the perfection of woodwind instruments, so that they can take over many tasks that were previously assigned to the clarino player. On the other hand, however, it is also the shift towards even, uh, even higher trumpet pitches in which the gaps between the natural notes can only be closed by valves. Eichborn also criticizes Julius Kosleck by name, who is today generally regarded as the inventor of the so-called Bach trumpet. Eichborn writes, I have a translation on the right side. I will um, um, give the quotations in German language. Es sind mithin die Leistungen des Herrn Professor Kosleck in Berlin auf diesem Felde weder vereinzelt, noch kann man mit irgendwelchem Rechte von ihm behaupten, dass er die alte Klarinkunst neu entdeckt oder wieder erweckt habe, denn zu entdecken gab es dabei nichts und von einem Erwecken konnte deswegen nicht die Rede sein, weil das gelegentliche Blasen einer solchen alten Originalstimme nie ganz aufgehört hat. Mm. 
Julius Kostlek, I think most um, of you know him, was born in 1825 and died in 1905. From 1853 to 1893, he was a member of the Königliche Kapelle, the court orchestra in Berlin, serving as first trumpeter and solo cornet player. He also was a teacher for trumpet and trombone at the um, Königliche Hochschule für Musik, today the University of Arts, from 1872 to 1903, since 1894 as professor. His experiences and teaching methods resulted in the Große Schule für Cornet à Piston and Trompete, which he first published in 1872. Here the um, title um, on the right side. The respected cornet virtuoso was also concerned with questions of the emerging historical performance practice in the last quarter of the 19th century. Koslik was developing a straight A trumpet with two valves and was the first musician to play on such an instrument. The first known reference to this comes from 1884 in an article by Ernst Wagner in the newspaper Musikalisches Wochenblatt. He describes that the first model of such a straight trumpet was based on an instrument, quote, which was found in Heidelberg in 1870 in the possession of an antique dealer named Metz. In that newspaper, um, Musikalisches Wochenblatt, um, Ernst Wagner wrote, I quote, Eine sorgfältige Kopie dieses ungebogenen Rohres wurde in Berlin von Wernicke angefertigt und es gelang dem königlichen Kammermusiker Julius Koslik, auf demselben die äußerst schwierige Clarino-Stimme der H-Moll-Messe von Sebastian Bach bei einer Aufführung durch die Hochschule für Musik am 24. November 1881 in der Garnisonkirche zu Berlin genau nach der Originalpartitur mit größter Vollkommenheit durchzuführen. But which instrument maker has built that instrument? The here named Wernicke, it's Johann Friedrich Wilhelm Wernicke, was a skilled woodwind instrument maker and at that time a Königlicher Hoflieferant, a royal supplier to the court. But we know also brass instruments signed with his name, so if someone made this first trumpet um, of, of Koslek, it was either one of his journeymen or a, let's call it, subcontractor. It can be assumed that this instrument was already equipped with valves. A reporter wrote about the performance of the um, B minor mass in London with Koslek on 21st March in 1885 and described the instrument as, quote, a sort of valved coach horn of unmistakably modern character. We know that Julius Koslik played a cornet a piston by Ernst Lieberecht Paulus, which we heard also with the tuba here, um, which was built around 1878. It was a present, the instrument, was a present for Koslik from Kaiser Wilhelm I in celebration of the wedding of Princess Charlotte von Preußen. That coronet was dedicated to our collection by Clara Koslek, the widow of Julius Koslek in 1905. The here named Ernst Leberecht Paulus was born in Magnekirchen in 1839 and learned his craft probably from his father Christian Wilhelm Paulus. Since 1857 he has been active in Berlin. Probably he was a journeyman in the workshop of Julius Lemke because in 1866 he took over that company after Lemke's death, and he was also marrying the widow of Lemke. At the end of December 1879, he applied for the title of a Hofinstrumentenmacher, a court instrument maker, and in the course of this audit, he can be seen, uh, it can be seen that the workshop was comparatively small. He had one assistant employed and uh, an annual turnover of 3,600 marks which is, um, when we see it today, around about 29,000 euro um, a year. This is quite low, as the audit explicitly points out how little tax he has to pay. Because of this economic situation, it makes sense that Paulus might work as a subcontractor for other instrument makers like Wernicke. Apart from this cornet, very little is known about his instruments, some instruments um, yeah, come, uh, come to my eyes, like um, that tuba you presented here. 
um, but there are not many preserved, I think. But Paulus must have regularly supplied the Königliche Hofkapelle, the Royal um, Court Orchestra. It is also said that there is still a set of 12 ceremonial trumpets in St. Petersburg that Paulus have made. Latest in 1899, Arthur Sprintz took over the workshop of Ernst Lebrecht Paulus. Sprintz was born in 1872 in Wroclaw, a son of the instrument maker Franz Sprintz. At latest in 1897, he is known in Berlin because he married there in that year. Either he worked at the time in the workshop of Paulus or another instrument maker like Gustav Eschenbach. In 1905, he expanded the company's production to include drums and percussion. That's why we have a huge range of preserved brass instruments as well as percussion instruments made by the Sprintz company. So he, you, here, uh, here you see some examples um, of Sprintz instruments. In connection with the topic of my lecture, um, two instruments stand out and one you can see here in the top of the middle. And these are t these two instruments. And it's a pair of these so-called Bach trumpets in the Koslak stands. And they are part of the collection at the Historisches uh, Museum in Basel. The two straight trumpets were made by Arthur Sprintz between 1899 and 1905. They are equipped with two perine valves, um, half tone and whole tone, and both instruments probably represent a further stage of development compared to the original A trumpets, for they each have two belts of different lengths, several, um, several set pieces of different lengths, and two mouthpieces. This is um, to my opinion, intended to give the player the greatest possible flexibility so that he can master the virtuoso parts in the clarino register at any time. The instruments here made by Sprintz were made shortly after the Paulus workshop was taken over by him, as indicated by the signature inscribed um, E. Paulus Nachfolger, um, A. Sprintz Berlin. So it's E. Paulus successor, what he inscribed the signature. A. Sprintz, Berlin. As already mentioned, however, Koslek had also used trumpets of this design before. So were these made by Ernst Leberecht Paulus? Quite possibly, because they were custom made for a very special purpose and were certainly not produced in large numbers. Even if it, can, even if it cannot be proven beyond doubt, it seems very plausible that Sprintz learned to build this model from Paulus and Koslek for sure, or he still employed a journeyman who had already worked under Paulus. This type of trumpet too picks up on two things that were said at the beginning about clarino playing. On the one hand, a very old form of the clarin is taken up here in that the instrument is designed as a straight trumpet, and on the other hand, the missing playing technique for the clarin register is replaced with the help of a technical solution in this case, the two valves, whereby valves were more or less standard for instruments at the end of the 19th century, even if there were some advocates of natural instruments. Just um, to go further, and another person, um, we will come to a person named Gustav Gnädig. Gustav Knetich was born around 1874 um, and died in 19, uh, 1912. He was a student of Julius Kostlek. As a well-trained trumpet player, he not only thought about the playing of his instrument, but also about its acoustics and further improvements. He published his ideas in essays in the Zeitschrift für Instrumentenbau and in his monograph Der Physikalische Orchesterklang und das Klarin. In it, Gnädig explained his thoughts on how a revival of the old trumpet art could succeed and which instruments were necessary for this. With a patriotic choice of words typical of the time, he first supported his arguments with the historical facts. He took up Koslek's ideas, for example, in the distinction between the warlike sonorous playing, principal playing, and the singing soft and mellow clarino playing. Gnetisch criticized the decline of the art of the trumpet, which reached an unbearable peak for him at the beginning of the 20th century. He also attributed that to the trumpets in B-flat used at the time. 
He saw the reasons for his antipathy towards the trumpet in the fact that the old trumpet instruments, or better, the art of playing the old trumpet instruments, had been lost. Knetich tried to solve the problem with the lost art of clarino playing with developing a new instrument, an instrument without valves and without um, lead pipes. And it should also be possible to play contemporary music on that instrument as well as clarino playing. So Knetich wrote in, uh, in his um, book Der Physikalische Orchesterklang und das Clarin, Quote, die gewünschten heutigen Klarin- und Prinzipaltrompeten erfordern aber anders gebaute Instrumente, als es die alten waren, da letztere trotz ihres rhythmisch-harmonisch-melodischen Tones große Mängel aufwiesen, welche für die heutige Zeit nicht mehr vorhanden sein dürfen. Diese Mängel der alten Trompeten waren erstens das unvollständige Tonsystem in ihren unteren Oktaven, zweitens der mühsam zu vollziehende Stimmungswechsel und drittens die schwierige Ansprache und Anpassung der Naturtöne der Klarinlage in das temperierte Tonsystem. Es ist mir nun gelungen, solche Instrumente herzustellen, welche alle künstlerischen Anforderungen auf das Vollkommenste entsprechen. Knetich called these new instruments Clarin and Principal. He chose Friedrich Adolf Schmidt Jr. as a partner for the production of his Clarino and Principal trumpets, who developed the instruments together with him and later, later manufactured them. Friedrich Adolf Schmidt was the son of uh, the most time in Cologne, especially established brass instrument maker Friedrich Adolf Schmidt, who is known for his patent of a um, Echo Bogen. Friedrich Adolf Schmidt established this workshop in um, Adolf in Saxony at first, and in 1883 he came to Berlin. It seems that he, has special, he was specialized on trumpets, but he builds also cornets, horns, and trombones. By the end of 1907, the ideas had matured so uh, to such an extent that Knetich applied for a patent, which was granted to him on 10th January 1908. He formulated his patent claim as follows. The ventiloses Plechblasinstrument mit Kesselmundstück und mehreren Zügen dadurch gekennzeichnet, dass jeder Zug mit, einem, mit dem einen Ende über, mit dem anderen in dem anschließenden Rohre teleskopartig derart geführt wird, dass die Durchmesser der zylindrischen Rohrstücke vom Mundstücke an bis zu der dem Trichter am nächsten liegenden Gegenkleidstelle zunehmen. Um. As an advantage of his design, Knetich wrote that the new bore should make it easier to play. In this way, he wanted to compensate for the disadvantage, in his opinion, that the cylindrical bore stretches the air column too much, while the conical bore stretches it too little. In the end, the individual slides are a string together of cylindrical individual pieces growing in diameter, which Knetich called a telescope mensur, such a kind of telescopic scale. In his opinion, this made all previous trumpets with their shortcomings superfluous, and it allows all compositions to be performed originally with the greatest of ease and perfection. The Deutsches Museum in Munich has a set of such Knetich trumpets built by Friedrich Adolf Schmidt Jr. in its collection. The trumpet principal um, has two windings. We can see it here. Um, one is built in the style of a trombone as a slide, which lowers up to four semitones. And the second one serves as a tuning slide, which is additionally equipped with a clamping screw. As described in the patent, one end of the slide is passed over, the other end into the adjoining tubular parts, creating a telescopic scale whose diameter increases steadily from the mouthpiece to the bell. The clarine is one octave lower and therefore has five windings. One is made in the style of a slide trombone and can be deemed by up to four semitones. Two windings are made as a double tuning um, slide with a clamping screw. So 
These were more than less unique instruments which were built by um, Friedrich Adolf Schmidt. I know of a total of six such trumpets, which I would call Knetisch trumpets. However, their production um, remained a short intermezzo without a happy ending. Gustav Knetisch was, also, uh, was only um, 38 years old and died in 1912. Friedrich Adolf Schmidt Jr. followed him a good year later. Nevertheless, the Berlin Harlensee based inventors Hermann and Paul Sushi tried to further improve the telescope system and applied for several paintings on it. I am not aware of any surviving instruments by Sushi. So to conclude some points, the return to the instrument of the Baroque period at the end of the 19th century presented both players and instrument makers with new challenges. The developments in Berlin at this time show, on the one hand, an intensive effort to correctly grasp the historical context. On the other hand, they also reflect the technical industrialized spirit of the times. And so both the straight two-valved Bach trumpet by Julius Kostlek and the principal clarine trumpet invented by Gustav Knetisch remain more than less singular developments that did not achieve a broad breakthrough. But it was Julius Kostlek's interpretation of the trumpet that initiated a discussion that was to continue in the following decades. He thus laid the basis for today's piccolo trumpets. By the way, Arthur Sprintz built or sold such an instrument a little later, but that should be enough for today. Thank you for your attention.